So the other thing I wanted to talk about today was Henry David Thoreau. I've mentioned him a lot at the beginning of the class especially, and I've been thinking a lot about him in response to what we're all going through. Thoreau's experiment was pretty simple, and it's been criticized by some. He went to land that was owned by Ralph Waldo Emerson in Concord in the 1840s, and he squatted on that land that he didn't own and built a cabin on the edge of Walden Pond. And the reason it's been criticized is, oh, he went home on Sundays to uh, do laundry at his mom's house. He saw other people. He really wasn't a hermit, um, as they claim he professed to be. He wasn't like a Western pioneer. He wasn't facing hardship and the wilderness and animals and possible death. Uh, he was just living in a relatively um, suburban atmosphere in Concord, but in the woods, and he built his house himself. Well, I would counter those arguments to say by saying what he was trying to work out there. He wasn't trying to be a noble savage. Well, he did a little try to be a noble savage, but he wasn't trying to have a wilderness experience. He was trying to live out some ideas, and those ideas, it happens, uh, are ideas we could use very much right now. Uh, Thoreau, in many ways, was the original social distancer. Um, he saw the value in solitude and thinking out things alone. He was a great walker to the tune of four hours a day. He believed in self-reliance, but ultimately he also believed in community. The main thing he believed, um, it seems to me, that's relevant now is that rather than always wanting more, 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 one could be happy with less. That that was a uh, decision based on, will, on wisdom, but also on economics. Why work, work, work to spend, 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 when by simply reducing your wants and your needs and simplifying, his big word, you could not waste your time working toward getting that money uh, and things that you needed, um, that you thought you needed. Uh, this is relevant now in that he believed, you know, though he traveled to Minnesota and Maine, his famous line is, I have traveled a great deal in Concord. Concord is where he lived. He found his peace or his excitement, really, in the ground below his feet in the place where he had decided to wedge down. Uh, as we quarantine, we can all be thinking about that, about how we can find uh, not just peace, but excitement where we are in our own backyards. We can also think about how to start wrestling with the idea of doing with less and being less busy. It seems to me the busyness that he saw coming, for instance, on, one, on the opposite bank of, of um, Walden Pond, uh, the railroad had intruded on his world and came hurtling through. So he saw the future we were heading toward of more and more and busy, busier. And it's, it seems to me pretty obvious that this has continued to speed up and speed up and speed up and speed up until we're swirling in it. Um, you know, you go to Many of us go to our email in the morning and we feel like we're playing a game of space invaders, shooting down the incoming email. We rush to the next thing. We travel when we have time off. We're always trying to fill that insatiable thing that Samuel Johnson called the hunger of the imagination. Another uh, friend of mine and poet, Reg Sonner, said we humans are an elsewhere. We're always going somewhere else. Now, I'm also skeptical of being in the present moment in a perfect Zen-like calm. But I do believe that through work and discipline, we can rein in the hungry imagination and we can focus more on what is in front of us and we can concentrate and do good work and enjoy where we are and who we're with. That's the gist of what I, I read in Thoreau, uh, this sense that uh, we've got it all wrong. One of his famous lines, which you probably know, is the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. 
that desperation has gotten less quiet over the years. So how do we, how do we begin to lead less desperate lives? A few of his answers, right behind me here and out there, are spend time in the natural world, get to know that world's rhythms, get outside of the human mind into the biocentric world where other animals and trees and lichen and fungi have a consciousness too, and really trying to use human empathy to go beyond the human. See in that world the simple economy of need, uh, what do we need to do? We need to feed ourselves, clothe ourselves, stay warm. Use that as our model, not fan fantasies of success or the newest and the latest and the fastest. Um, politically, Thoreau famously spent a night in jail, which he wrote up in his essay, Civil Disobedience, uh, because he did not agree with the taxes for the country going to war. He took stands, unpopular stands. Uh, he helped uh, the slaves on the Underground Railroad coming through Concord. He was the first uh, major speaker to speak publicly about John Brown's rebellion. Uh, his self that he had found, partly through the natural world, uh, was a self that he trusted, and he trusted it when he came to the social world as well. It should be added that he was more social than is commonly thought. He played the fiddle. He was the, could be the life of the party. He loved kids and hung out and entertained them and brought them on nature hikes. And he was not a hermit, but he was a believer in individualism. Uh, I think the relevant lesson for right now is there can be a different world than the sped up, hyped up, amped up, swirling, speeding world that we've accepted as the real world. This is the real world too. Thanks.